Hey everyone, the Game Chief here. Today I'm going to be doing a video on setting up scheduled messages and restarts using the messages.xml file that is built into your DayZ server. This video is broken up into three quick parts. Timestamps are on screen right now as well. So for a very quick introduction, as of right now, there's three main ways to set up automatic messages and restarts for your DayZ server. And we'll be quickly covering them as I feel it's very important to understand your options and you know what's best between choosing between all of them. So let's go ahead and get started. Messages.xml, the first method is using that file located in your mission folder. This file is a built-in way to send very basic messages and shutdowns to the server at a set time. This is best if you're just doing simple shutdowns and restarts and only a few messages, which is what we're going to be doing today. This is really ideal for people who just want a simple server restart and you don't need full access to the Windows install, so it doesn't require any third-party programs, tools, anything like that. So say if you're using um, some sort of game provider, like a game service provider, that you don't get access to the Windows install, this is very useful. The only thing you need is some way to boot the server again after it shuts down. Most game server providers have a check that essentially says if the server, if the server shuts down, it'll go ahead and just turn it back on. Or you have a batch script that's constantly monitoring it and turns it back on, stuff like that. The second option is Battle Eye Extended Controls or BEC. BEC is an external program that interacts with your DayZ server via the Archon protocol. Of course, it features a scheduler that is capable of scheduling messages and restarts, but it also has a bunch of other advanced features for server owners. Such features include a bad nickname kick, non English name kick, minimum and maximum name link, server whitelisting, etc. I have already made a video on Beck, which can be found in the video description and on your screen right now as well. And the third option is a CF Tools control panel instance. Um, essentially, this is basically all of the other features, but requires a control panel instance from CF Tools, which is at capacity. If you want more information about Omega Manager, I highly recommend checking out my video on the topic linked in the video description. And just for a heads up, my next video is going to be on setting up a CF Tools control panel instance. And after that, the next video is going to be about doing restarts and scheduling stuff through the control panel as well. So if that's something you're interested in, definitely keep an eye out for that. And now that we've gone over the three main methods that I typically see people using, we can get started with setting up the messages.xml file. As you can see here, we are remoted into my server already, and I am using Omega Manager. However, you don't have to be. You can use pretty much anything as long as the server will automatically restart itself when it's shut down. Omega Manager will turn it back on if it sees it's off. If you have most batch files, the script will be set up to automatically relaunch it if the server closes. Stuff like that, so you should be good to go. So we need to go ahead and find our messages.xml file, which is in our MP missions folder. So I'm going to go ahead and open up Atom as that's my preferred text editor. And I'm already in my DAISY directory, and then we need to get to our server. So in our case, the server we are using is this one right here, which is server 0. So I'm going to go into there. And then so we have all our add-ons, and this is you know, just a normal server install folder. I'm going to go into MP missions, and then you're going to want to select the current mission that you're using. So I'm using Trinara, so this is the one I'm going to select. However, if you're using another map, you use that, or if you're using a modded map or whatever, just use whichever one you're currently using. So we'll go inside of here. And then we'll go into the DB folder. And then you know have your types and stuff like that right here, um, where you make modifications there. We'll go ahead and modify messages.xml. Now that we have that open, it does give us some information in a comment here. It gives us a link to the server messages wiki page, which I have open right here as well. So this page just kind of tells you about how everything works and it explains some of the few basic things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and clear this out. It's just some very basic stuff in here, and we don't need that. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and create a messages.xml file that kind of just shows off all the basic features that you can do with this file. And then you guys can definitely make any changes and anything else you need to make it fit for your server. So we are in an XML file, so this specifies as XML. And then we are in this messages tag, so we want to stay in here. And I'm just going to tab over and we're going to create a new message. So a new message. And for this, I want the delay, I hope if I could type here. So the delay is going to be one. I'll explain that in just a moment, why we're setting that to one. And 
and then we're going to set on connect to one as well. And then we'll set some text in here. And then once we're done, we're going to want to close this. So we'll do slash message again. And then because I'm using Atom, it like kind of formats my text, depending on your text editor, that it may or may not do that. And I'm just gonna add a little bit of space in here. So let's go ahead and explain what we wrote here. So the first thing I wanna point out is this on connect flag here is set to one. So essentially it means it's going to go ahead and try to run this as soon as a player connects. But then we have this delay here, which is set to one, which is how many minutes after the on connect you want it to display. So you can either not have a delay here or you can put it at zero or whatever, and it'll happen immediately once the person gets in game. But for kind of demonstration purposes, I decided to put it as one minute once they get in. And then we have the text right here. So it says, welcome to my name. We'll get to that in just a second. Enjoy your stay. So this is a variable or a placeholder you could call it. So essentially it's gonna display your server name. There's a couple different placeholders if we go back to this wiki page. And then they have name, so the server's name, port, which is the server's port. And then there is tmen, which we'll get to that in a few minutes, but it's about the countdown and shutting down the server. And then I'm gonna go ahead and copy this existing message we just created and let's create a few more real fast. So we're not gonna do on connect on this one. And then let's see here. Alrighty, so we went ahead and created another message. So this one just says you're playing on name, so the server name, and then it has the repeat flag here. And this repeat flag will go ahead and means that it will run every 40 minutes. It will go ahead and say this to the players. And then we're gonna go ahead and copy that and we'll make another message. And for this one, we just went ahead and changed the repeat to every one hour, every 60 minutes. And then this one, we're just saying, you know, this server or, you know, the name of your server restarts every six hours. Again, you can adjust this to be whatever you want, but this is just letting players know. And we'll go ahead and copy that once more. We'll leave that repeat on. And then we added this message, which again, it's on repeat for 60. So every 60 minutes, it will say, you know, tell your friends about name. So the server name, have them join. And then I hand wrote out the IP address of the server. And then you can do pound sign port because that's one of the placeholders here is port. I'm not too sure why server IP wasn't included as one of those. That would make a lot more sense. However, I'm just kind of showing all the different options you can use. And then I went ahead and created one more message here. So this one sets a deadline of 360. So this is in minutes, this is six hours. So it basically creates a countdown for six hours. And then whenever this ends, so once it reaches the deadline, it will go ahead and trigger a shutdown. And then it also gives some text here. So server name will restart in T min. So that's how much time's left, minutes. And then if we look over at the wiki page here, you can see the countdown feature is listed here. So it will send it 90 minutes, 60 minutes, 45, 30, 20, 15, 10, 5, 2, and then one minute before the deadline is reached. So that will go ahead and get triggered. And then once that's triggered, the server will go ahead and get shut down. And then however your preferred method of having it automatically come back up. Again, in my case, the Mega Manager will go ahead and bring it back up. Or if you're on a game server provider, it should automatically bring it back up if it's set up the way most of them are. And then if you're using a normal batch script, then that should be set up to do like a check to see if the EXE is not running. If it's not, it'll rerun it, stuff like that. And then the one thing about this is you don't actually have to use this as a shutdown. You can use like the deadline for different types of countdowns, but essentially it's only gonna be used in this case, the way it's programmed for server restart. So now that we got that all going, let's go ahead and save this file. 
So we went ahead and saved the file and then I'm going to go back over here and then I'm going to go ahead and shut down the server and I'm going to go ahead and bring it back up because it does require a restart for changes to that file to be taken into effect. And while that is shutting down for testing purposes, I am going to change this um, a little bit so we can see all the messages. So instead of, you know, say, you know, six hours, we're going to do 10 minutes instead. And then I'm going to set these to a few different things. And then we'll go ahead and save that all again. And then we'll go and get this started. Alrighty, and I'm going to go ahead and join now that I've seen that that has come up. And now that I'm in, I'm just going to go ahead and be waiting for those messages to kind of pop up and we'll come back when they're here. And then we can see one of the messages right there just came up, actually two of them. So the first one was, you know, the one listing the IP and the port. And as you can see, it did plug in the port and the server name. And then that one minute one just showed up as well after one minute of joinings, you know, saying welcome to the server name, enjoy your stay. So that went ahead and popped up as well. So we'll just wait and make sure that the messages show up as well. And then we got a message there about the server restarting every six hours. And then as we can see there, it went ahead and gave the five minute warning saying that, that the server name will restart in five minutes as we would expect. Because I only set this to 10 minutes, um, we didn't quite see the 10 minute warning because we weren't in the server yet because it does go based off of when the server starts, not when the first player joins. So we'll just sit here for a minute and we should get the rest of those warnings as well. And then as we can see right there, it gave us our four minute warning. And then as we can see right there, there was our three minute warning as well. And then there's our two minute warning. And then there it went, it said server is shutting down. And if we go back into our server here, we can see we got disconnected. And then it's finishing the script for us disconnecting. And then now it's doing terminating in five, four, three, two, one, and it's gonna go and shut down. And essentially it kicked us just a little early and then it went ahead and started doing the shutdown. And then if we look here, Omega Manager is going to see that the process isn't running anymore, so it's going to go ahead and relaunch it. But again, Omega Manager is not required, just something needs to restart the process. And then as it goes, it's starting back up and should be good to go. Alrighty, now that everything's working, I went ahead and adjusted these times again. So this one's every 70 minutes, this one's every half an hour, every 45 minutes, and then again I reset this back to 6 hours. So those are some more kind of reasonable times for those messages to go. As you saw there, they were kind of going pretty quick because I wanted to make sure they were all working properly. But on that, it looks like everything is working correctly. Um, if you want a copy of this kind of test one, it will be on Pastebin and the link in the video description as always. And that's about it. It's very likely I forgot something or made some sort of mistake or something like that in the video. So always make sure you check the video description and the pinned comment for any corrections. If you guys have any questions, feel free to leave a comment on the video or join my Discord server, which is always in the video description. Joining my Discord server allows you to send me DMs. There's also a support channel that others and myself can help you out resolve any issues you may be having. And just as a heads up, my next video is going to be on setting up CF Tools Control Panel Instance, so make sure you are subscribed so you don't miss that one. And other than that, if you guys have any video suggestions, feel free to leave a comment below, and have a good one.